I'm Jennifer Marie Keller. Welcome to my Diary of a Painter. This week I finished up this little painting called Witch's Brew. It's four by six inches oil on panel. There is some kind of black liquid in the glass and a pinkish white flower in it with some dried up flowers on the ground. I really like that contrast or just the time element that is in between the fresh flower and the dried ones. Maybe the liquid gives life or maybe that fresh flower is going to look like the dried one soon. I really like that this painting has a curious element to it. I painted this from life and my setup is right beside me and I'm gonna show this a little later. So to make this, I filled up the glass with water with black food coloring in it and I had a fresh flower from my yard that I would put in the glass and after a while it would start soaking up so much of that food coloring that the petals, the veins in the petals would start to turn this green, sickly green, and I wanted that the flower that's in the glass to have this really fresh appearance, especially contrasted with the dried ones that are on the ground. So after a while, I'd, I would have to change out that flower once it started to look too sickly and get that tinge of green into it, especially since the flower is, it's white, but it also has um, a bit of pink in the petals as well. And since pink and green are complementary colors, it kind of would just make it look gray and gross. So I just had to keep an eye out on that and make sure that if that is happening and when, when I'm painting it, I'm just like conscious that I want that flower to look really fresh and white and pink and none of that green grayish color in it. I really like to try and get as much variety in a painting as possible from the the elements that are actually in the painting like glass or flowers to the way that things are painted and so I had a lot of fun exploring different ways of painting things with this guy so I really like the dried up flowers that are on the bottom they are painted almost in an abstract way when you get right up close to it the the way that the brush strokes are broken down has that abstract quality to it. I mean, when you stand back, it clicks into place, uh, which is contrasted then to the glass, which is a little bit more tightly done. This is my setup. I have all the blinds drawn in my studio, so I'm working from artificial light for this one. So this is um, a light box that I really like that I got from Amazon. I've got my easel right here with the painting up on it and my little setup right there in front of my large Samson painting. And then right beside me, I have my rolling cart, which I have my palette on right now, but when I work, I hold my palette, but having that cart there is convenient because I put my brushes there when I'm not using them on top of there or paper towels or like the mirrors that I'm using for my scene tools. And I had this setup um, over a bit of time, so I put tape down for the light and my easel, so if those get moved around for things that I need to do, they would be able to easily put back in the exact same spot. And so here you can see my setup. I have a crate that is really handy to put still life objects in because it's already controlling the light to make it a little bit more intense. I have this black foam core that um, just brings a shadow down a little bit right here so I can start to see the transitions of a darker value um, being put down right at the top. And so my painting is, it cuts off probably like here before the shadow is being affecting that light on the back wall, but that's fine. I kind of just in my mind lowered where this shadow part is right here down a little bit. And so with this glass, you can see that the water has started to evaporate and there's kind of that green rim. So I ignored that because that wasn't what I wanted in my painting. You can see the flower where it's starting to soak up that green grossness from the black food coloring. So I just made sure to ignore that. Um, with the flowers on the ground, that was compositional element. I like that they are, especially the leaves around the bottom of the glass, how they circle it. And 
I think it brings nice movement into the bottom of the painting and also like how the how the stems come out and like start to like point up more towards the glass and you can see from my painting that the shadow is not the same in the background um i first painted it how i saw it with having that shadow just coming up straight and i felt like that chopped up the composition in a weird way especially in the background there so i made the shadow a bit more curved right here which i like that a lot better and so when i was painting then the dried flowers on the bottom um the focal point is the glass and right up here so when i was looking at the the actual setup when i would make judgment calls for how much detail I want down here, I would look up to the focal point and then out of the corner of my eye, see how these things looked. So you can see that there's more, a bit more contrast if you look right at these flowers, um, but not so much if you're looking at the focal point and then those out of the, the corner of your eye. And so I feel like that gives a little bit more, well, that does give more direction in the painting where things aren't treated equally. And then here I have some of my scene tools. I also keep them on my rolling table that my palette is on. But I've got an average mirror. I have a black mirror, which is nice for showing um, values and how values are compressed. And so with the black mirror, let's see if I can do this. <laughs> You can see that the values look more comp compressed in the mirror um, for the actual the actual setup then. And so when I'm struggling and things aren't looking as nice as I want them to, this just helps give me some direction to solve to solve some things um, value wise and also color wise to make sure that things are looking unified and not over modeled. Okay, this is another tool that I like. So this makes things go more sapia and it really helps then with seeing just pure value. And then lastly, this red lens, I will use this towards the end of the painting. And this is, shows you the, the light effect. So I only use this red lens once everything, I'm out of the block-in process and more rendering and finish things, finishing things up. And yeah, this shows me the light effect and making sure that where things are looking as bright as they need to be. And a reason why those scene tools are very helpful is because with paint, you can't get as close to nature as you see values. So things always tend to, paint's not going to be as bright enough. And also it's not going to be as dark enough either. So um, those things just help making sure that you're compressing the values to get as most, as most out of your values and colors as possible, even though it is more limited a bit than what you're actually seeing than how nature presents itself. That is my Witch's Brew painting. Please subscribe to this channel if you have not so already. My limited edition prints of my Cherubs painting is still available on my website at jennifermariekeller.com. And you can also find more of my available work there. If you have any questions, feel free to email me at jennifermariekeller at gmail.com. And if you'd like to follow any more of my social media platforms, you can find them in the description box below.